Good morning or afternoon, wherever you be in the world or the country. I am Tawana Carlton, your host to Soul Cooking with Tea. It's just a Thursday, Thursday, and it's going to be meatloaf day. And so I wanted to come in and share with you uh, our meatloaf, uh, how we prepare our meatloaf, how I grew up. Um, my grandmother showing me how to do meatloaf. So let me get over here on the computer. If you would, thank you for those that are joining us live and those that would catch us. So give me a second. Let me get over here. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome, welcome. So give me a second. Let me get over to Soul Cooking because I want to share it out with my family and friends. Hello, hello. Thank you all for joining me here this morning or afternoon, wherever you may be. Um, just wanted to come in. Uh, and just share some some quick food tips. Thank you, thank you for the likes. Let me share it out. And then while I'm sharing, if you would take time to share it out with your family and friends and tell them about Soul Cooking with Tea. So give me a second because my computer is trying to run a little slow. Hello, hello. Thank you all for coming in and joining. So, of course, it won't let me share. Oh, here it is. It says more options. I got to read. And so let me see if it'll let me uh, share it out. But if not, I'll go back after this is over. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, my sisters and brothers, for joining. Thank you so much for joining. So for some of you um, that follow uh, my personal page, uh, you know that we lost our aunt Hill in Alabama. And so this past week we were uh, in our hometown of Troy, Alabama. So I want to take this time uh, to thank each and every one of you for your prayers, your cards, your text messages, your phone calls. For those that were able to come by to see me, I thank you. For those that wasn't, I understand because of the COVID-19. But I want to let you all know that we all truly appreciate seeing your faces uh, your condolences, uh, the phone calls, the cards, the text messages, just knowing that we are truly loved and that we are family because that's when we need each other the most is when we are going through trials and tribulations. And so I thank you so much. Hello, he hello. So uh, one thing, I've already washed my hands, so I am clean and ready to go. So growing up, um, thank you so much. So growing up in the South, uh, one thing uh, our grandmother made was meatloaf. Uh, and so it was, it's never been my favorite, but I would eat it because I, you know, was curious. I wanted to taste it. And for another thing, my grandmama did, wasn't going to make another meat. So if it was meatloaf today, that's what you ate. So I grew up eating meatloaf. And so, and then with our meatloaf, she always fixed uh, mashed potatoes. Uh, and we always had uh, some kind of other, you know, vegetable with it. Uh, so today I'm doing my style. Like I say, you know, we, as growing up, you switch it up, you do things a little bit different. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you what I have here on my plate. I'm going to bring it over so you can see it. So on my plate... I have some, I have some squash, I have one squash, I have some onion, and then I have a sweet onion, and then I have some whole cloves of garlic, and so here, I just want to show you, I have these different colored potatoes, I've washed them uh, off already, that was just a piece of paper, and so I have these colored potatoes. I wanted to show you all what they look like. So let me take my knife and I just want to cut one open so that you all can see the inside of the potato. So as you can see, it's a different color. So I call it on the outside, it's kind of purple. And then on the inside, you can see it has a dark inside. And so these are called baby potatoes. They are tender. Uh, it says they are tender skin, creamy moisture texture, perfect meals and so what I'm going to do first of all uh, remember I'm always talking about hello hello I'm always talking about uh, I cook with love and that's what cooking is all about is cooking with love because you love to cook you enjoy cooking and then you enjoy sharing a meal and so I'm talking about that I use um, my grandmother our grandmother's uh, pots and pans I still have those so here's a pan it's been through a lot as you can see 
but my grandmother always made her cornbread in this and so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bake my potatoes so I'm just going to take a piece of aluminum foil I'm just going to put it in the bottom of this pan because what I'm going to add are my potatoes. Let me pull my pan over so you all can see exactly what I'm doing. Hope that you are having an amazing, amazing day. Hope you had a wonderful and restful Labor Day. So I'm just going to add my potatoes. As you can see, I, like I said, I've just washed them. Haven't put anything on them. I'm just going to add all my potatoes. I'm going to take, oops, drop my uh, whole clove of garlic. Just drop it in. I've already cut the tips off. And so I wanted some small onions, but in the grocery store, I couldn't find them. So what I'm going to do is, so I had to improvise. So I'm just going to take off the tops from this onion, just the tops, and I'm going to put that in. I am going to use this. Uh, let me peel some of this off. So when you have these onions, sometimes it has like an extra skin. So you can see, just go ahead and pull that off. Uh, even if you peel and you wash them. Uh, just pull that little extra skin off. And so I'm just going to drop these whole onions in like that. Now, oh, I have one more potato. One more. So, since I have squash. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining. So, since I have the squash, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dice it up. Just however you want to do it. And I'm just going to add this. So, here I have my vegetables. I have my potatoes. I have whole garlic in here and so whole cloves of garlic so as you can see I put that in so now because I told you I wasn't going to not use my onion so I'm still gonna use this onion and I'm just gonna cut it up make sure you cut the tips off because sometimes they kind of be kind of brown on the end so I'm just gonna add some of this to it just cut it up you know on large pieces you just then that's it. That's all. So I'll get a chance to use all of this onion. Okay. So as you can see. Now, the only thing I've done is I cut up everything except the uh, potatoes. I left the potatoes whole because I'm going to roast this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to add some olive oil to it. So my, as you all can remember, I had a pump and I was spraying, my, my spray bottle broke. And so now I'm just using just the bottle. So I have to be kind of careful because I don't want to add too much. All right, want to make sure everything gets a little oil on it. And so what I can do, just to make sure, oh, because I don't want nothing to stick. And now, the only thing I want to add, I think I'm just going to add a little lemon pepper. Hello, thank you so much for joining. It's a meatloaf day here in Soul Cooking with Tea. And so I'm just going to add quite a bit. You may hear some noise in the background. Uh, I have the fan blowing because it's kind of warm here. So I just put on quite a bit of lemon pepper. And it's just going to, everything will take on flavor. So I hold it up so that you can see. And, you know, I get this lemon pepper. I got this one from Walmart. I usually get it from my local 99 cent store. Uh, but you can get it from, you know, any store uh, that you choose. And so here it is. So you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. It looks delicious. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that up. And I'm going to put it in the oven on 350 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that to the side. Because when I finish this live. I want to make sure I take pictures so that you all can see exactly what it looks like before it goes in the oven. So, like I said, I put just a little olive oil on it, uh, and I put a little lemon pepper, and I'm going to wrap it, uh, just close it like a dome, put another extra piece of aluminum foil on top, and I'm going to put it on 350 degrees, and I'll cook until tender. So, then the next thing, which is the main course, let me get the hamburger meat. Hold on just a second. Let me get a knife. So, hope that you all are having an amazing, amazing day. So, now I have my ground beef. Let me get one more thing.
and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I had to get a bowl because I have to show you how to make the topping for your meatloaf. So remember I said in cooking, make sure you have color coded knives uh, for different things. So here uh, I have my ground beef, but before I start with my ground beef, I want to cut up some of the sweet onion that I had. So here's my sweet Vidalia onion. I'm just gonna cut off me a piece using a same yellow knife because I've only just used it for my vegetables. And so let me peel off the outside of it. And so what I'm going to do, okay. So I'm just, like I said, I didn't take out a cutting board today just to cut this up. So let me take that piece off. And I'm just gonna hold my onion and I'm just going to dice it a little bit. Just a little bit. That's all I wanted to do is dice this onion. Uh, hello, Joanna says, just a few days ago, T, I was really trying to remember the right way for meatloaf. And here you are. This is good. Yes, here I am. Yep, making some meatloaf. So listen, girl, get out your paper and your pen and write it down because it's simple. Uh, you can add, uh, some people like to add green peppers. Uh, to it. Uh, some like to add the yellow peppers, the uh, the green ones, the yellow, the red. Uh, I just like to add just a little onion and I'm just going to dice it up just a little bit. And like I said, I'm using a sweet Vidalia. Thank you so much, Joanna, for sharing that with us here in Soul Cooking with Tea. And so I'm just using just a sweet Vidalia onion. Now, you could take your, whatever your vegetables are that you want to use. You could uh, steam them just a little bit in the skillet if you wanted to so that they, you know, it wasn't so fresh. But as the ground, the meatloaf cooks, uh, cook the onion. Let me get me another little piece of the onion. So thank you again for sharing that with us here at Soul Cooking with Tea. So let me get just a little bit more of this onion. And like I said, I'm just dicing it up, not not too fine. And she said, Joanna says, I should have stood closer to my mother and my dad was no help. Feeling emotional now. This is special to me. Oh, how sweet. It brings back memory. Yes, this is this is what I learned from uh, our grandmother, Joanna. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And, um, and it does make you emotional. And I understand that because um, when I make certain things or when I'm cooking certain things, it brings back those memories. And, you know, those are sweet memories uh, that I and each one of you cook it with family. And it brings back those memories. And it's so amazing to still have those memories and still be able to recall things. So here, as you can see in my uh, bowl, I've only just diced just a little onion. And it's sweet. Like I said, it's a sweet Vidalia onion. Uh, and like I was saying, uh, for me, um, I'm not crazy about touching ground. I I'm just not a favorite. Uh, if I had a choice, somebody else could be doing this. This part where I have to touch the meat. Uh, it's just me. <laughs> it, it has nothing to do with the ground. Nothing to do with anything. It's just, I just don't like the feel of the ground beef. So I have on me some gloves. And so a lot of times people like to, you know, when they're working, they like to work with their gloves. So here I have some ground beef. So let me move this forward. And the only thing I need to do is open this up so that I can get to it. So remember, as I was about to say, uh, use your color coded knife so that you won't cross contaminate anything. Uh, so I use red is for meat. And so let me move my bowl over. Let me set this to the side. Now let me get my bowl. So I have my ground beef. And like I say, I'm just using my gloves because I'm not really a big fan of touching ground beef. Uh, Joanna said I used to use gloves too with meat. Yes. So really, it's just, to me, it's just the ground beef. Uh, everything else I, I can touch, it doesn't bother me. It's just when I have to know that I got to mash that ground beef together. So since my hands are still clean, I'm going to use uh, a little garlic salt. So you season it with whatever, you know, your seasonings are. I uh, grew up using uh, Larry's uh, seasoning salt. Uh, Larry's garlic salt. So I'm going to use a little garlic salt. So, you know, whatever you like. If it's McCormick, if it's the 99 cent store, if it's your 
whatever, your Dollar Tree. So I'm going to use a little black pepper to it. And again, like I said, being from the South, we don't really measure. We just eye it. Thank you so much for the hearts. And I'll add a little bit of the lemon pepper to it. Now, let's see. That was it. So that's all of my seasonings. Now I'm just going to mash it so that I can get the onion in into the ground beef. And then the meatloaf will be ready. Know that the the part with the uh, seasoning. Yes, you got to know what kind of seasonings you like to put in. Because everybody, you know, everybody likes something different. And so we just use a little basic, you know, nothing, nothing special. One thing that uh, my grandmother uh, would do when she would make meatloaf, I'd uh, hold it together. And I don't know if it was because of the meat was different then or... Uh, I don't know, but she would always add an egg. And then if she had breadcrumbs, or if she did have breadcrumbs, she would take some saltine crackers. And she would have, I can remember, she would let me crumble them up uh, as a child. And I didn't have a problem then, you know, touching the meat. Uh, but now I do have a problem touching ground beef. But that's okay. And I remember she would let me uh, crumble the saltine crackers i thought i was doing something but i really was doing something because i was learning how to make meatloaf and so only thing uh i may yet add a little more seasoning so i always keep one hand clean one hand when i, I am i'm doing you know working in the kitchen i try to keep at least one hand clean so that i can add uh, some more seasoning so I just put a little bit more garlic salt and a little bit more lemon pepper and just remember not to work your meat too much just fold it in so I have my onions folded in I'll show you what it looks like so you can see so that's what my meatloaf looks like so what I uh, remember as a child let me sit that to the side for one second just get me a pan here. So one thing I remember as a child is that when we, my grandmother would make meatloaf, she always made individual loaves. So uh, it would, we would have, you know, quite a bit. So since having a family and uh, our son is here, he can, can attest to this. I would always, I learned to make everybody a loaf. So everybody has their own loaf. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us here today and soul cooking with tea it's meatloaf thursday so i just took off a piece as you can see and i'm just gonna kind of shape it i'm not mashing it i'm just shaping it in my hand just shaping it in my hand just molding it and so now you see i have a ball i'm gonna put that one there let me make up another one here. Thank you so much for joining. Tell your friends about Soul Cooking with Tea. Share us out. Tell them about it. We also have a YouTube channel. So if you have not joined and went over uh, to YouTube, make sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So as I said, like as I was saying, I'm not uh, mashing it. I'm just molding it real tender in my hand, just like I was if I was handling a uh, bread. So I have. Number two, I'm gonna try to in. I say try. I may or may not I have to get another pan, but we're gonna try to work it that we can get three in. And so I'm just molding it a little bit, trying to make it into a ball real tenderly, holding in it. And so as you can see, I have three nice size balls. Uh, meatballs as some people you could take this and use this as your meatballs if you wanted to you know and then, then break it down into different sizes uh, to make uh, spaghetti or if it's a meatball recipe you could use and so you as you can see I have three nice size uh, meatballs or meatloafs and so one thing that I've learned and I, I saw this on uh, Rachel Ray years ago uh, is that if you put an indention in your meatball just an indention right in the center that'll keep it from shrinking so so I'm mash this with just I'm just using my two fingers you could use it just like that but just put it in 
in there and that keeps it from shrinking mary said thank you for the uh invite yes yes you're so welcome i hope that you enjoy mary is talking about uh the service at greater life uh sd if you're looking to look for service or church service uh, we have bible study on wednesday night from seven to a little after eight it's greater life church sd we have a uh, sunday service right now because of the pandemic we only have one service and it begins at 8 a.m. every Sunday. So you are very welcome. And you can always, uh, for those that uh, that don't catch the church services live, you can always catch a replay on Facebook and on YouTube. So one thing I've done is I put an indention in all three. Let me take off the gloves so that I can show you. So I take my gloves off so that I won't. So let me wash my hands. Just give me a second as I walk away. So I've just uh, put a little indention inside the meatballs. So let me show you that you can see what I've done. And I'm gonna make sure I take pictures before I put everything in the oven. So I have my meatballs ready. Hold on just one second. Woo. It's a little warm in here. So I had to get me a glass of water. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. It's a little hot here. Whew, so I had to have a little water. I thank you all for always coming in, supporting Soul Cooking with Tea, telling your friends and family about uh, us here at Soul Cooking with Tea. I try to make it uh, the teaching me explaining things. I try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, not where you have to go extravagant um, ingredients. Just something simple. Uh, just some ground beef, uh, onions, if you want to add peppers, whatever you would like to, you know, add to it. It's very simple. A meatloaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover my meatloaf and I'm also going to put it in the oven on 350. Uh, and I'll cook it for about, I'll check it after about 20 minutes, depending on how your stove cooks. So about 20 minutes, uh, you probably will have some juice inside your pan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Depending on the type of ground beef you buy. Some people buy the 80-20, some people buy the 70-20. Oh, hold on, y'all. Listen, I'm kind of sweating, so excuse me for wiping, but it's a little warm here. Uh, so it just depends on what you buy. Uh, I think I got the 70-20, and so I know I'm going to have a little, okay, but I'll cover it with aluminum foil. So like I said, about 20 minutes in on 350, make sure you check it. Depends on how your oven uh, cooks, if it cooks kind of fast. Maybe after about 15 minutes, you might want to check your ground beef to make sure that uh, it's not cooking too fast. Uh, or if it's cooking too slow. So you you know, you just, everybody's oven is different. She, Mary said, Has, have you ever made it with turkey? No, you have to share that recipe with me, Mary, on how to use turkey. Um, oh, ground turkey. Okay. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. So yes, Mary, uh, since you said that, Today is National Swap Day. So I've swapped and showed you and shared with you how I uh, grew up watching my grandmother make uh, meatloaf. And so since Mary said that, Mary with me and share with the Soul Cooking family uh, how to use the ground turkey. So if you don't mind, uh, go back in today or you can send me the message however you want to do and share with us how to make a meatloaf using ground turkey which is a great idea a lot of people like turkey they like to eat healthy they like to eat lean and so today is national swap day so i'm swapping with my whole soul cooking family and friends about with me and so mary i i would love for you to swap with us and uh, show us how, tell us how to use ground turkey and share your recipe if you like with your soul cooking family and friends. Thank you all so much for joining. So again, I'm going to uh, put some aluminum foil on this and I'm going to cook it also on the 350. Let me set that to the side. And so now the last thing I want to share with you all, let me get some my board. 
because I had some seasonings up there. So once um, Sabrina says I use ground turkey always. Okay, so ladies, listen. Share with me and the Soul Cooking family how you use the ground turkey because I've never used that. Uh, never. I've always had ground beef and so I would love to know, you know, what ingredients, what to put in it uh, so that it's not dry. I don't know if ground turkey is dry. I've never had ground turkey. And so just share with us about using ground turkey. So once my meatloaf uh, comes out of the oven and it's still kind of warm, I can remember my grandmother would have this sauce in a bowl and I never saw her make it. Uh, and I didn't know exactly. I knew it was the base was ketchup. I knew the base was ketchup, but she always had so many different things she would put in. It. I never knew, and to this day, I don't know exactly all she put in it. Uh, but so I came up with my own, and our family loved it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share with you what I do. And so I just use ketchup. I don't measure. Like I've you know, said before, one thing that you do have to remember uh, when you're cooking. Hello, thank you so much for joining. Uh, one thing you have to remember is that when I do measure is that when I'm making uh, cakes and pies, I was going to say pies, but cakes and pies because uh, if you don't get the right measurement uh, with your cake or your pies, guess what? That cake and pie will fall, that cake would not taste good that pie would just be a hot mess it may be running so you always have to make sure when you're uh, making cakes and pies, you use the exact measurement so I've just pulled some ketchup in so let me just show you I've just pulled some ketchup that's it just some ketchup I'm gonna add a little honey now you can add a little mustard but you just have to remember mustard is kind of strong and I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit I know you're like that's a lot but it's not that's just just a little bit and I have, I have you when I make this, but you just have to be careful. You can also add just a little sprinkling of brown sugar uh, to this mixture if you like. One thing I can say, let me get a spoon. One thing I can say about when we have meatloaf, uh, our son loves uh, meatloaf. And I would have to make some have to be full. So if I use a, a cereal bowl, I would have to make sure it was full because they just wanted to have that sauce, as we say down south. They just wanted to lather the sauce on it. So I had to make sure I always had enough sauce because when our nephew uh, was here, and that was my cameraman, Big Baby, we miss him. Um, they would be in comp like it would be like, did you eat the sauce? How much sauce is left? I'm going to have to ask T to make sure it was always uh, that thing going on at the table. So I just want to make sure, see how it tastes. I need some more honey to it because it's not, it's still tasting kind of ketchup-y. And I don't want it to be ketchup-y. I don't want it to be too sweet. But I needed to add a little bit more honey. So I think I do it. That would do it. And so when my meatloaf comes out, only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to it. Uh, you can put it back in the oven if you want it to get a little, a little, um, like a little crunch to it. You can put it under the broiler when you put the sauce on it and it just gives it a beautiful glaze. I'll make sure I take pictures and post it here in Soul Cooking with Tea. And this is just our glaze that we'll use on our meatloaf so like i said today has been just meatloaf thursday here's our meatloaf i'm going to cover it put it in a 350 degree oven i also have some potatoes uh whole clove garlic and i cut up some squash and i just put on uh some whole onion scallions i cut it up and i'm gonna put it also in a 350 degree oven and this is going to be our Thursday meal. Uh, it was It's quick, like I say, about 350. I'm going to put it all in the oven at the same time so it all cooks at the same time. Um, and about 20 minutes in, i also check my vegetables, making sure that I have enough olive oil. I may have to put a little bit more on that to just, you know, keep it from sticking. And then once it's done, what I like to do is I like to take this 
and stick it under the broiler so it gets a little crunchy. Uh, it gets that um, that that heat from the broiler. It gets right on top of it and it makes it very brown and I love that. Uh, and it just gives the potatoes a little bit more crunch. Mary says sometimes I use crushed potatoes on top of my... Oh, is it on top of your... Uh, loaf Mary or do you use it on top of your vegetables let us know share that in the in the feed and so it'll get just a little bit more browner I'll make sure I take pictures of everything before we dig in so that you all can see but I'm gonna take some pre photos that's why I haven't covered everything because I want to make sure I post the pre pictures and then the after pictures uh, again I thank you all uh, family uh, friends, my class of 1985 from Charles Henderson High School, I thank you for the calls. I thank you for the texts. I thank you for the card. I thank you for just the acts of kindness uh, shown to us during our um, time of bereavement. Uh, just being able to see those that were able to, you know, drop in. Like I said, I understand it's COVID. We're still trying to take, you know, as many precautions as we can. Uh, and I thank you all uh, for the calls. I thank you for all for just the love that you've shown uh, on social media. And thank you especially. I'd like to thank all my soul cooking family and friends. Listen, I was totally, and I mean totally surprised at the different, at different up to me when I got home in Alabama saying, I watched you on YouTube. You are the you are our Martha Stewart. And listen, just to know that my family, my friends, and our loved ones, and like I've said all the time, sometimes complete strangers, uh, just said, "Hey, I watch you on Soul Cooking with Tea on YouTube." And I thank you all for that. I thank you all for your support. So tell you and friends about Soul Cooking with Tea, and and if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you go and do that. We would love to hear your comments. Leave comments uh, and about the videos that we post. I have so many now that I need to post. I need to get someone, an assistant, to be able just to post the videos for me. It's just a lot. But I will I promise you I will get those posted so that you all can see more videos on our YouTube channel. And just it warms my heart to know that you all truly enjoy me sharing my life, sharing my food, how I learned to cook, uh, the stories of how I grew up in the South, uh, learning to cook from the women and my grandmother and my mother, uh, and how I learned to cook by sitting at the end of that table. Because that's what we here at Soul Cooking with Tea believe. It is time to bring our families back to the table because I have a picture that I found in my grandmother's brag book where I was sitting at the end of the table where she was preparing a meal. And so those are the memories that I will carry with me forever. And being able to sit not only at my grandmother's table, but so other many other women and my mother, uh, just being able to watch them cook. And so we truly believe here at Soul Cooking with Tea during these times, uh, I know it's, it's difficult. I know it's hard on, you know, quite a few of us, but listen, bring your family back to the table. Turn off your electronics, turn off the computers, turn, put the phones down, and start teaching and sharing your history about family, about food, and how you grew up, uh, and just bringing it back to the table so that our history, no matter your race, it has nothing to do with race, it's about sharing your history uh, what you learned as a child and now in a, as an adult and having family and cousins and uncles and aunts and being able to bring everybody back to the table, whether it's uh, on a Zoom or you're doing a Google call, whatever it is, being able to share that love that we have for food and family. So again, I am Tawana Carlton, your host of Soul Cooking with Tea, and this has just been a Thursday meatloaf day and i thank each and every one of you for joining me here and soul cooking with tea and mary said before i go she said on her meatloaf uh she uses the crushed tomatoes hello 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 thank you so much for joining listen if you are in the brundage troy goshen luverne area make sure you go by lawanda if you don't mind put the name of the restaurant where you are the chef the head cook um, and go by and check her out listen the food is amazing 
It's homemade. Uh, go by, check her out. Lawanda, if you could put the name of the restaurant so that you so that everyone would know if you like I said, if you're in the Troy, Goshen, surrounding areas, go by and check her out. Uh, not only will you be fooled by the plate, but listen, she got sweet tea. I think she has sweet lemonade, and I know she has a homemade, not box, not bought, but homemade desserts. Everything she cooks is fresh, freshly made. Nothing is bought. Everything is prepared by culinary trained. Uh, she's also trained uh, in being a home cook as a southerner. So, uh, LaWanda, make sure you put the name of the restaurant in so that those in the surrounding Troy, Alabama area can come by and support you uh, in the new restaurant. So, guys, I thank you all. I thank you again. Thank you so much for the love that you've shown Soul Cooking with Tea. Camera man or camera woman. So again, I'm Tawana Carlton, your host of Soul Cooking with Tea. And this has been a Thursday meatloaf day. I'll make sure I share my photos with you and make sure that you go by our YouTube channel uh, and subscribe. So she, Lawanda put it in. It's called Island Girls. Island Girl, it's across the street from the Pinkett store, and that's in Brundage, Alabama. Go by, check them out at Island Girl. Listen, you won't be disappointed. I promise you, you will not be disappointed in whatever you pick out to eat from the menu. Again, have an amazing, amazing day. Thank you so much for joining me here live, and I'll see you again in Soul Cooking with Tea. Bye, y'all.